Hello everybody. In this module, I'll be discussing this published paper that implements a support vector machine uh, in order to predict storm surges. Although given the amount of time, we would not be able to cover all the technical details of this paper, but would concentrate mostly on the overview and how in general the method has been implemented and how it differs from more traditional um, numerical or predictive techniques. Uh, a support vector machine is essentially uh, a machine learning algorithm and this is why this paper is unique where it, it, it tries to implement a machine learning algorithm uh, as compared to deterministic more traditional numerical algorithms and in this case it's the continuous time data and hence uh, it has been tagged as support vector regression. Uh, we'll start off with the definition of a storm surge. Uh, essentially, uh, during a storm, when high winds push on the ocean surface, we see that there's a significant increase in the water level beyond that of uh, the natural sea level, uh, and, and and this is caused due to uh, due to the invading winds on the ocean surface. This rise in water level is termed as a storm surge. Given the amount of destruction that it actually causes in the surrounding areas. It is imperative that more robust and predictive modeling techniques uh, be devised in order to predict the uh, increase in water levels under catastrophic conditions. The contributing parameters that affect the storm surges are generally pressure, wind velocity, directions, and tide patterns. We have seen uh, in the past that existing uh, numerical techniques have been leveraged in order to come up with better finite volume or finite element methods that that uh, uh, performs direct numerical simulations over a full navio stokes solver. However, uh, they prove to be very computationally challenging and uh, have a very high algorithmic complexity, often not in polynomial time. Uh, this calls for uh, Predictive models that may be less challenging than than a navy stroke solver, and uh, previous literatures have uh, gone through a neural net based predictive model where the input data are basically the contributing parameters, and uh, uh, the recorded data of storm surge levels are my output classes. Uh, the neural network trains on these data and tries to come up with a nonlinear model that actually fits uh, uh, these four contributing parameters in this case and, and predicts a new storm surge levels uh, in case of a new incoming storm with different high pressure values and velocities and so on. However, uh, neural networks often face uh, the same problems that, that, as that of a native stroke solver. It is a computational challenge to implement a, a very efficient neural network and they often suffer from underfitting or overfitting uh, issues which will be discussed uh, in the next slide. Uh, in, this in this paper, the authors paper, have uh, tried to implement a support vector machine in a continuous time sense. It is often called a support vector regression and has uh, a fundamental, fundamental similarities with linear regression algorithm that uh, we have all seen. A linear regression algorithm is uh, essentially an optimizer that, that minimizes the, the squared error between the predicted values Tn which can be a linear straight line or a linearized polynomial or some form of polynomial in general. And it does that by optimizing over the basis vector w. In case of a support vector regression, it is somewhat similar, but at the same time, not exactly the same as that of linear regression. It does not uh, minimize the squared sum of the errors. In fact, it, it, it minimizes w over uh, the cost function, which is essentially a, uh, an epsilon insensitive error function. The, the objective is to come up with the values of C and W that minimizes the cost function uh, given on the right. In, in linear regression, we, we often see that uh, the, the, the model suffers from overfitting or underfitting issues. Overfitting is basically when your model has has captured the given data set really well, but predicts really badly for newer data sets. So it has basically memorized the idiosyncrasies of the given data set. While in case of underfitting, it, it does not fit the data well and neither does it predict well. So we're trying to look for a trade-off between underfitting and overfitting and hit the sweet spot, which is just right, and come up with a model that, that does uh, more or less, or less well, well for the given data set and predicts 
efficiently for newer data sets as well but it is often a pain to come up with uh, this 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 sweet right model that that um, predicts newer data sets and hence linear regression is often not the best algorithm of choice for machine learning uh, in case of uh, support vector machines we are actually not solving for a polynomial or a line in fact, we are solving for a region in space that best optimizes this cost function. So we are solving a quadratic optimization problem subject to this, uh, to, to this, uh, to these two conditions, which which basically reduces the error unless uh, until it has become uh, more than the epsilon, epsilon value. Um, in two dimensions, this line. Is it, this, this, this the line is basically a y equals mx plus c kind of line, but in higher dimensions is basically a hyperplane. But uh, as is evident from the picture, it, it is a hyperplane and not a surface. And the idea that support vector machines are linear comes into the picture here. In general, it's not so, uh, especially for this problem where uh, the the input parameters and the output data are highly nonlinear. Uh, it is imperative that we come up with a model that captures the nonlinearities as well. In fact, it gives us some idea of a very high-dimensional surface that can that can regress over uh, the given data set. For this, the authors have used uh, a kernel trick for nonlinear support vector machines. Uh, what it essentially does is tries to capture the nonlinearities of the data by a suitable transformation into a high-dimensional basis set. So. Uh, the inner product in X and Y can uh, only be taken when they're linear, but it can be done if they're nonlinear. So basically, they convert X and Y to a suitable transformation to phi X and phi Y, and in this higher dimensional basis set, we have phi X and phi Y to be linear. And this way, we can compute the inner product between phi X and phi Y. So basically, uh, the, the WX the inner product in W and X that has been shown in, in the constraint conditions and now is transformed into W and V of X uh, so that uh, uh, inner product between the transpose of V of X and W can be computed in order to solve this quadratic optimization problem. Based on this technique, uh, they've come up with a predictive support vector machine and have compared the values, the storm surge levels, uh, for for two data sets, both of them have been taken from the Longdown station in Taiwan that experienced the Erie typhoon, and they show quite uh, remarkably well uh, predicted values uh, given the data set that was taken uh, for almost 48 hours. Uh, in both the cases, we see that there is a, a drastic. Uh, decrease in the uh, mean square error, RMAC stands for root mean square error, and we're trying to find out the basis vector for the best value of C that, that uh, minimizes the RMAC. We see in the first case, in which uh, where the kernel uh, transformation function has been chosen to the spline, the RMAC goes down to 0 0.05 for a value of C which is equal to 10, while in case of uh, the RBF-based kernel transformation, the RMAC value goes down to about 0 0.015 for a C value of 2. Uh, so this essentially shows us that the predicted uh, results are actually quite close to the actual results. In conclusion, this paper implements uh, a new support vector-based regression algorithm to predict water rise levels, which is essentially a storm surge problem. Um, it shows us the accuracy of the model is uh, is remarkably high and is often better than uh, previous literatures that have reported neural network-based predictions. In fact, the paper goes on uh, to compare the solutions with uh, traditional numerical DNS solvers from Easy Stokes, and they show that all the predictions are are as accurate as that of a DNS solver, but are quite uh, good in comparison. To, to deterministic uh, algorithms, and hence it's a good choice for machine learning algorithm to predict uh, storm surge problems. And that's it. Thank you.